welcome back everybody and um, this video is for all the people who commented on how much they love my makeup that I wore for an event I did recently for a really lovely store called Phoenix Style. They've got one in Wimbledon, London and one in Phoenix and one in Cobham um, in Surrey and it's a real mixture of secondhand fashion, vintage fashion and brand new fashion. So it's a lovely lady Paige who owns a store that invited myself and Gail Rinkoff who I do How Do You Wear It on Instagram with and um, it was a really lovely way to connect with people. I think I've mentioned this before but I haven't done the makeup and I've had so many requests saying, would you mind just please letting us know how you wore your makeup on that day? So here we go. Um, I started with my Merit Great Skin, uh, which I'm really loving. Um, and obviously, as you would appreciate, anyone who's an expert in their industry, whether it's, you know, law, nursing or makeup artistry, um, whatever skill you have, you sort of always feel that you should represent it, obviously, in the best way. So I always feel slightly more self-aware um, if I'm doing events like this where I'm sort of being you know Caroline Barnes makeup artist um, that makeup stays put so I've got a couple of little things here that I would do differently if I'm doing an event as such um, so uh, I had my SPF on I've put on my merit because I want to get a nice dew to my skin but I don't want it to be sparkly or sheeny because I just want my skin to look as fresh as possible because that's what I'm trying to educate women to do with their skin in terms of their exfoliation, their moisturization and the smoothness of the skin. And if you've watched me for a long time, you'll know smooth skin reflects the light beautifully so it bounces off radiance. Then I chose to go with my Merit Stick in Linen. Um, still enjoying this very much. Um, I like it because as you can see, it gives loads of coverage. Um, and I was kind of quite busy in the morning, but I wanted to make sure that um, I got good coverage that would last all day. So I start off like that. Now you might think, oh my giddy aunt, you probably do. Um, and you'd probably go in with a brush yourself. But if you go in with a brush, um, you will definitely soften the effect of what I've done. Um, but you will also remove a lot of the product. And I'm all for spending a decent amount of money on, on makeup if you want to, but I'm not for wasting makeup. Um, and if you're using a lot of sponges and a lot of brushes, you can actually um, waste those product, waste the pigment that you've just placed on your face, mainly just through sort of worry and insecurity that you've done, done too much and not just going with the process. And I think if you've followed me for a long time, you will all be um, aware that the makeup, like any kind of painting, I mean, look at the size of my eyes. I'm literally like, ee, hello, I'm a little mole. Um, takes um, takes time and when you take out any kind of um, colour um, in your skin or you blank out your skin you immediately make your complexion look flat you make your eyes look small and the beauty of makeup is that you can then re-put those colours and tones and washes and pigments and textures back into your skin in the best place possible oh, no much there, to flatter your skin so that is my base just covering all that redness, um, but you would never just do that and powder and go. This is just a sh the beginnings of a shaping base. I'm then gonna go in with the Brilliant, I don't know if any of you have purchased it since I talked about it. Oh, that can go down. Um, this is Sunnyside, the awesome bronzing cream from Beauty Pie, and I've been really, really enjoying applying this with my My Kit Co 023, which is a really big, um, angled brush that's kind of fluffy um, and it just goes on super beautifully super beautifully that's a little bit too much isn't it it goes on beautifully onto the skin um, very little blending the color is perfect it's not red and instantly very quickly just a little bit over the nose break that up you can see that my skin then connects with the colour of my neck and my chest and that immediately starts to take shape yet when you look at my face in daylight which is how I film to try and make it as real as possible flaws and all um, you can see that it just looks really really fresh just a little bit in the sockets knock that back and that that's it but I do go in with powder um, so I would use my, uh, what number is this? I always get confused with James's numbers. They're always quite um, 
uh, well, odd. This is, these are literally odd. 0 0.33. Um, nice directional setting, nice firm brush. And I'm going to be using my, Fee, my Vive Modern Powder Perfection and my shade is medium. I just love, love, love. Um, oh, it's coming out. You can actually, they're refillable. Um, I love this. This powder is in between Charlotte Tilbury airbrush powder and the MAC Studio Powder Fix, which what I, is what I use to cover up um, spots, acne, um, anything that I really need to eliminate from the skin because that's a powder foundation in one. And this one just sits in the middle. Um, I'm saying sits in the middle because it sits in the middle in terms of coverage. So the Charlotte Tilbury is like, okay, the lightest one would be, I didn't know we were gonna do a powder film, now we are, here we are. Charlotte, um, so let's go for the lightest powder you can get would be the Hyaluronic by Viterri, right? I love that one. I particularly love it in the powder pressed, the pressed powder. Um, because obviously it's just easier. I do have the translucent one, but it's the touch. If you've never tried it, it's, you'll have it for years. It's definitely worth it. Put it as a birthday list or so, put a birthday gift on your birthday list. I'm seeing to be saying things backwards today. Um, oh, we're all guilty of that, aren't we? Well, no, we're not actually. Actually, I'm just thinking too much in my head um, and not concentrating on what I'm saying. So, if you're looking for a lovely powder, the lightest, sheerest powder would definitely be my recommendation of the By Terry Hyaluronic Powder. Then Airbrush by Charlotte Tilbury, then the Vive Modern Complexion, and then the Studio Fix by MAC. Right, we got there in the end. Okay, so that is the base and that's how I started. So for my brows, I wanted to define them more. Um, and I went in with the Stila Medium, which I love and really just kind of amplified. You can see that they're getting slightly lighter at the end. So I might need to go in and just add a little bit more to that if I need to, but for the moment they're fine. A nice soft brow. Let that dry. Go in with the other side. It's just really for me that frame. Look at yourself in the mirror and just check where your first eyebrow starts. Just literally put a pen Preferably an eyebrow pencil, because then you can just beep, mark it. If you use one of these, shake them down if the ink's running out. Um, I should just apply it that way, because the ink's probably better coming out. And that's where your eyebrow should start. Um, so many of us have sort of overplucked our eyebrows badly. Um, and we just need to add in a few little brow hairs. Or we start as we age to kind of lose eyebrow hair, which is really annoying. But this is just such a subtle cool toned colour that just gives me a bit of framing but not too much now got to be this is a really brilliant um what do they call it glued eyebrows <laughs> yep it really does that i use this at work it's fantastic and again i want to have something that's really going to last and i want my brows to literally stay in place. We might need a little bit more on these ones at the outside. I'll come back to that in a second. But look, this really lifts. Really good value for money. But again, I want to just not want to think about my makeup. I want to concentrate on what I'm doing. But I also want my makeup to, to last and, you know, look as presentable as possible if I'm talking to people about how to to wear their makeup. I'm just going to get something darker for that eyebrow. Right, I'm going to use the Ultimate Arch Definer by Blink Brow Bar. Now this is great because it's slightly angled so I can just almost press it on and create that brow shape. Do you see what I mean? Do you hear that much better now? I need to I really plucked my eyebrows in a while actually, so they might get a little bit thicker too. I tried some eyelash um, enhancement, you know, the lash grow thing by a new company and it stung my eyes and I'm not going to use it. I'm, re I'm really curious to see whether it works or not, but have you ever had any instances like that with the eyelash? I mean, I'm quite happy with my eyelashes, so I sort of haven't bothered. I've definitely tried it for my eyebrows, but I've not seen it through to the six weeks, which is, you know, but that's just me all over. 
um, but I'm not sure about putting all this these sort of strong chemicals around my eyes. What do you think? I mean, I know it's obviously brilliant if you've got short eyelashes, it works really well, that's quite nice, that one. Um, and then just press it down, just so it sits nicely on the skin. Um, yeah, I just wondered what you thought. If you had any feedback, do love your feedback. Right, let's put the lid on that. Now, this is the shirt that I wore. Um, so just a very kind of like simple shelly colour. Um, I love these sort of soft pinks. Um, and I've now got a little bit of warmth in my skin, I can kind of carry it off a bit more. So I wanted to wear a bright lip, which everyone's been loving. And actually, I've been, I've been wearing it a lot of when I've, I've been filming bits and bobs on Instagram whilst I've had it on, out and about. And everyone's been very complimentary, so I thought, right, I must do this. Um, but for my eyes, I went in with something very, very soft. Now, this is new. This is the 20M from Giorgio Armani. Um, another really beautiful texture. Um, because I just wanted a bit of shape on my eyes. I wanted to push my hoods back slightly, open my eyes, um, but because I'm wearing a strong lip, I want to keep the overall look fresh. Um, if I went in with lots of brown eyeshadow, um, look, it's really lovely. It's sort of peachy. It's like a peachy, peachy nude. Um, it would just look, one, a little bit dated, if I went in with lots of brown eyeshadow or a sort of done eye. And if I went in with lots of dark eyeshadow, so it could be a gray or it could be a navy or even a green. If I sort of just took my sort of classic um, eyeshadow color, um, and there's lots of different price ranges for, for creams like this, but this is obviously a luxury product and um, feels beautiful on and it stays put. Um, I love Armani products. I mean, you know you're not gonna waste your money Let's just put that on there. And so what I'm trying to say is that I've got definition in my eye, but it's not um, throwing it off. It's keeping the look fresh. And as we get older, we tend to get a lot of darkness in our face. We get darkness under the chin, around the nose, in the eyes. So in order to kind of keep the freshness in our face and the brightness and the youthfulness, think about lightening and brightening. So if I'm wearing a dark makeup, um, I would do lots of kind of inky colours around my eyes. Maybe I'll do a stronger eye. I haven't done that for a while actually. Um, but I keep the colour of colour um, really injected into the roots of the lashes, not to spread around because um, unless you're kind of, you know, genetically blessed, um, it's hard to carry those strong colours off. But actually, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna retract what I've just said. I'm not gonna edit it out, I'm gonna retract what I've said. So actually, because I'm pale skinned and blonde, the juxtaposition of the darker shadows on my pale skin sometimes can't, well, aren't, isn't that attractive, okay? But if I've got darker skin, darker hairs, darker eyebrows, like many of you have, I'm sure, you can go much darker. But be careful that you're not darkening your skin. So don't go for a darker blush, a darker brown, a darker lipstick try and keep that brightness and try and keep that liftedness. And maybe that's where you're sort of going wrong. If you're putting your makeup on and you're not getting that kind of joy from it, that could be um, a reason too. Okay, so that's really as simple as I did my eyes. I might just add a little bit more color on that because I didn't double dip that there. Let's just put that there and that'll blend in and it just sits nice and seamlessly. It's a bit of something, but nothing. Oh, I'll turn that off. Right, again, so I love my Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk, but it can um, dilute on my eyes sometimes. So I went for Beauty Pie or a Rap Star because I know this is not going to move. Um, has anyone tried this? This is their first tubing mascara um, and it's fantastic. Um, it's fantastic because a lot of the early tubing mascaras literally sort of went on the lashes just like that. And sometimes, especially as a working makeup artist, you need a very light, sort of glossy inked lash. Nothing that has sort of like too much volume, etc. But this one, once you've put it on and then you put on a second coat, like I will in a minute, it just really comes to life and lifts and you get a lot more um, definition and lash separation with this and it stays put. So I'll just put that on now. Just maybe I'll come back to it in a second. Now, what did I do for the lip? Oh yes, I just put a little bit of the lipstick on, didn't I? 
Right, so for my lip, um, I started with my CeraVe, the Hydrating Hy Hyaluronic Serum, which I've gone through pots and pots of this. So this is a really great texture um, for getting hyaluronic on your lips pre-pigment. So if you, you know, suffer from dry lips or your lips are dry, you know, it's never ideal to kind of put a coloured lipstick on because obviously it goes into the lines. And as I was explaining to the clients that I was with, you know, by the end of the day, I think I left the house at like 10. The, um, the talk was at 12. I and mean, we were still talking at half two, three. And I was like, look, my lipstick probably doesn't even look perfect anymore. And it didn't, but that's life. I mean, you can't put makeup on and expect to stay like that. I mean, some people are so lucky, I say that. If you've got friends, I've got friends with beautiful, big, rah, lovely lips. And they, yeah, they sort of drink and eat without disturbing anything, but yeah. If you're one of those people, I envy you, but I'm not. Um, so I put that on first, and then I go in with a little bit of my Trini Miracle Blur, just over that top line there. Um, anything that just mattifies, even if you haven't got something like this, even if you just use something that sort of mattifies the lips, and just press that in. Lovely. And then a final bit of powder. So looking very simple, kind of very plain. But this is the lip that everyone's been complimenting me about. It's um, NARS Air Matte Mad Rush. Um, again, it's a really beautiful orangey red. This colour I just love for this time of year. It's almost like daffodils for me. Like, yes, let's get that lovely orangey red lip out and feel great. And it does. See, see what you think. Anyway, so it's a very, it's a dry matte formula and you just can't feel it on your lips, which is what I love. Now that's a lot of pigment I've just put on my lips, okay? So you've got to apply this with caution. So I would suggest doing this and then rubbing it in. And then using the stick to go in the corners. And mush, mush, mush. Now the reason I'm mushing, mushing, mushing is because it just allows the pigment just to settle in. And then you take your ring finger and you just soften that line. Because this colour, in my opinion, looks really beautiful, soft and diffused, not hard. Sometimes a beautiful pin sharp red lip is really gorgeous. But in the day, um, casually sort of talking, I haven't done my top lip obviously, this kind of like soft diffused effect on the bottom is what floats my boat. It's interesting, I was trying it on some of the ladies and um, they were like, oh, I can't wear that. I'm like, yes, you can. Let's just give it a go. And they put it on and one lady was in a navy jacket and a white shirt and quite a, a goldy necklace. We put that on and it didn't work. And I said, listen, put it on with something simple. And she did because we were in a shop and she could change clothes and it looked amazing, really amazing. So again, that goes back to, I will put this lipstick on, <laughs> That goes back to how we balance our makeup with what we wear can affect the overall look. So using the point of this, I'm just going to literally push it very gently to my cupid's bow. Okay, very gently. I wonder if you can hear the birds outside. I've got this hedge outside. And there's so many nests. Oh, it's so lovely waking up to that noise. Hmm, good. That went on nicely. Shock for me. Clean cotton bud. And go over the lip line. A little bit of black there, that's annoying. Now you might have a perfect lip line, you might not need to worry about this, but 
a bit of dust there, it's really annoying. Um, if you don't, you don't need to worry about doing this. But if you do, this just helps you make your lips look bigger. If you've got small lips and you want to wear colour because you like the way that it looks and feels, this is a way to do it. <clears throat> really taking off all the excess. I'm just pulling that through and it takes a moment but then once you're done you are done oh that's literally gone over a little bit too much so let's get a clean one there and just take that off there I'm gonna fish the color into all of the lip Great. Now, a little bit, a little, little bit, just as a little bit of a wash into the brown, rub together and just blend, blend, blend. It's a little bit of a flush. I'll probably kind of naturally sort of flush off anyway as I'm talking, so I don't want to do too much, but it just It just ties that look in. Oh gosh, I've just noticed. <laughs> Got a little bit of um, something in my tooth. Really sorry, that's been bothering you throughout this film. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, and just for, for last, my last tip, all nighter, Urban Decay. Um, spray that there. Very gently. And then waft it, waft it, waft it. Because again, it's quite a soft makeup, even though the lips are strong, but I still want it to last. And there we go. And there's my look. Um, pretty simple, but nicely put together and hopefully um, applied beautifully and held tightly that it lasts. Anyway, I'm really waffling. Uh, thanks very much and I hope you like it. See you soon, guys. Bye.